This is not the way I intended to start off this video. <laughs> um, I was on my way to Channel Tunnel in France. Go and watch the Tour de France, me and Coop. He was having a drink right now. And halfway down the M11, uh, there was a very nasty crashy noise from the engine. Um, and I lost forward momentum. Uh, it transpires that the gearbox has blown and I've lost a uh, fifth and sixth gear entirely. So pretty much as soon as the first clip's over and done with that you saw there, um, I stopped, pulled over on the hard shoulder, pulled the bonnet open, you know, I'd look underneath, couldn't see anything. I was expecting something's dropped off. It sounded like I'd run over a ladder or something weird like that. And I was expecting something to be visible underneath as to why things weren't working now. Um, but there was nothing there. Um, so... Yeah, I just thought, well, it must be all right. Let's just carry on then. So I set off up the hard shoulder again and I sort of like, you know, it's a bit whiny. And as soon as I got back into sort of third or fourth gear, then things started to make a bit more sense that it was definitely the gearbox and it was at fault. So I stopped again, I had another look underneath all the way around the gearbox and the only thing I could see was what looked like an oil leak from the edge of the gearbox that had gone down the, um, the drive shaft for the near side wheel. Um, so yeah, my thought then was that it's definitely the gearbox. The engine seems to be fine. As soon as you dip the clutch, that's fine. The clutch seems to be engaging and disengaging fine. So it's not really a clutch that's exploded. <clears throat> It is just the gearbox or the inner workings of the gearbox and decided at that point then um, if it's going to be repaired um, then I just yeah it needs to be repaired I'm not going to sit on the hard shoulder and wait for two hours while some truck turns up then it's the wrong size truck for my van and then blah 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 and then they have to take you to somewhere that's definitely on their approved list and blah 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 so I thought, screw it while it drives and get myself off the motorway. Um, yeah into safety basically so that's what I did I came off the next junction which turns out to be about nine miles down the motorway so nine miles down the hard shoulder doing nothing more than about 40 miles an hour because that's when the gearbox sounded like it was about to fall out um, and basically I can get reversed first second and third and after that it gets much worse uh, third gear just wants to jump out all the time um, and fourth gear but yeah, it just sounds like it's churning around a bag of bits in the gearbox. So I managed to get off the motorway, all right. Um, I managed to pull over safely on the side road and just ring around a few garages. And at the moment I am at Adams Motor Co um, in Harlow. And hopefully they'll be able to help me out. Um, I think the consensus is uh, that it's going to be a new gearbox or rebuilt, reconditioned gearbox because of that it's going to be clutch um, so yeah I am not looking forward to this at all but these things happen and obviously our last trip we did all sorts of miles went everywhere uh, and the van behaved perfectly 
it just looks like for whatever reason something um, has given up in the gearbox so I'm just sat here now waiting for them to tell me how much it's likely to be and I'm kind of a bit stuffed because I phoned a few garages before I got to this garage and some of them can't fit the van in physically or can't fit um, time wise because in about well 12 hours time um, I should have been getting on the channel so that's going to be my next thing now is phone the channel and ask them to um, reschedule my crossing to whenever I don't know yet so let's just rewind a little bit obviously over the last four months you guys know what's been going on you know the changes have been made and stuff like that um, and I guess it might seem a bit of a shock that I'm on my way to France with Coop um, when the gearbox issue happens so why am I on my way to France with it's just me and Coop well for the past four months like I say everything's been going on um, and I've been basically sitting back and waiting for Mandy to make changes and do what she needs to do and things like that selfishly now the way I see it now it's very selfish of me to wait for Mandy to to make all the changes she needs to make and then I just sort of like play catch up with it or whatever um, but I think in the back of my head what I was hoping for is that she would make all the changes go through the stuff and then we would end up back in one van this van and yeah like I say selfishly that meant that everything that Mandy was trying to do um, she was kind of carrying the weight of my life with her as well so imagine like I just jumped on a train and every time it stopped at a station I got off and had a look around didn't particularly like it thought you know I'll just jump back on the train again wait for the next stop and then after so long of getting off at these little stops and realizing I didn't like it I just stayed on the train and started to get a bit annoyed that it kept stopping at places I didn't like um, and I started to um, withdraw in myself as well so I didn't like being around anybody um, I started to get very frustrated and angry with a lot of people um, and it changed me it made me into someone that I didn't like so much it was like effectively I was lost in myself I had just lost myself I'd lost the desire to do things I'd lost the wherewithal to make a decision about anything um, second guessing anything I did decide um, you know the usual thing that you basically just yeah get lost basically <laughs> um, and obviously the train driver was Mandy and the train was my life and it's like I say it's highly unfair for Mandy to carry the responsibility of deciding what's good for me what I like to do and what made me happy and all that kind of stuff um, and it took me a long time to see that um, we've basically had a chat over the last sort of couple of weeks or so to say I just don't know what it is I'm supposed to do I felt like what I was supposed to do was to sit around and wait for Mandy to suddenly you know see the light of day and go yes I know what it is I want to do now um, but truth is that she's trying to get used to this as well um, where to go what to do and get used to these changes in her body and some of the um, supplements she's taken and how those affect her in that as well so to carry the onus of me sitting there and waiting as well obviously was unfair um, and whilst I wouldn't say it's you know messed up our relationship it didn't help with the fact that we were getting on so well we started to have arguments again which the whole concept of this is to try and fix us so that we are happy with each other um, and that seemed to be backfiring so for the last 28 years we've been a team Mandy and I have been a team and I guess part of this other thing about me not deciding anything and doing whatever you call it selfish things of making Mandy decide or whatever um, the other side of it is that I've not been deciding what I want to do for me um, because I've not really been used to it 
and it's the same with traveling every bit of traveling we've done for the last 28 day, 28 years um, we've decided what to do so I might say right okay should we go there today but within that you know two people are making decisions about you know where you're going the food you're going to eat um, if you go somewhere you know get a bit of shopping or paying for tolls along the route there's an awful lot of um, things that I've taken for granted that Mandy's done and I'm now doing all that myself and I have to say hand on heart I'm finding it a little bit daunting I've got these sort of um, concerns in the back of my head can I do it is it going to be all right um, you know can I get Cooper through passport and all that into France and everything because Mandy's done all that in the past so this is all going to be quite new to me I'm just I guess expecting things to be very different and more difficult and because of that um, and the last four months I'm kind of like pre-programming myself to go don't bother them and what I've really got to do is bother I've got to put the effort in I mean for the last um, probably four weeks not really picked up a camera um, I've not edited the videos apart from the max fun video um, and to be fair um, pretty much most of the time I didn't do anything to camera because I figured well, you don't really want to know this do you you don't want to know what I'm thinking or I'm up to it's not exciting and um, there's no drama here and um, there's no laugh and jokes and all that kind of stuff and um, it's just me talking about general life and that's it um, and to the point of thinking um, yeah, there's no point what is the point so those are all the mixed mash of stuff going around my head for the past few months um, and like I say that's brought us up to date with why I was heading down the M1 down the M11 sorry um, to go to France in the van uh, before the gearbox did this So an update and hopefully some sort of uh, plan. Um, I'm going to stay here um, at the garage tonight. Uh, tomorrow they're going to take the van, strip out the gearbox and clutch and everything like that. And hopefully they've got another gearbox and clutch coming tomorrow. Hopefully it'll just take them a couple of days. Uh, so hopefully um, it's Tuesday today. They're going to start on Wednesday. Thursday so hopefully by Friday should be done um, it's three and a half grand um, so I just have to pay a thousand pound deposit um, so they can order all the parts um, like I said they're letting me stay here tonight but then I've got to go and find um, an Airbnb or something similar um, but yeah these things happen for all the people who said well what happens if then this is it this is the downside of uh, of living in a vehicle is that when the vehicle you know suffers um with a catastrophic failure that you can't carry on moving then you've just gotta um yeah fix it so um having enough money um to fix it is the first one having enough money to pay for hotel bills and things like that um, which you know is something that you'd save up for given the fact that it is so cheap living in the van so yeah how do you cope when things fail um, money in the bank or credit card whichever way is the the simple answer to that uh, the long answer to it is that you get it fixed <laughs> um, because obviously um, paying three and a half grand um, you know is f 
far, far, far less than the value of the van. I don't know what the value of the van is these days, but I'd probably guess in excess of 60k or something like that. Um, so yeah, was it 5% then? 5% of the van's value, and then at least it's got a new gearbox in it and new clutch. So down the line, that does help. Right, well, Coop's having a drink, because obviously that's what he does. Um, I'm going to phone Mandy now and explain what's going on. She was thinking of heading down this way, which is about two hours away. Um, so, yeah, maybe three of us in Bumble, rather than getting an Airbnb or a hotel for a couple of nights. We shall see. So I had a lovely night at this industrial estate. Probably about quarter to six this morning, I think, everyone arrived to work. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but hopefully today will be the day and Bumble's arrived to the rescue. Hiya. Hiya. I didn't think we'll be seeing you again so soon. I know. So that would be about two months, didn't we? Aye. I know mean, I love me now, but this is just a bit too far to go to uh, get to see me a little bit, a little bit more before you go. Three and a half grand, babe, that's what you're worth. Oh, you know. <laughs> I never knew we had such a price tag. <laughs> Oh dear, so we're just waiting for the garage owner to get in, to book it in today and then um, shoot off and what do you want to do? Duxford uh, du Airface? Duxford. Duxford Air uh, Museum or something. There's a quick one, where was the last time you heard the word said Duxford? Duxford. No idea. And when we went to France and we went to that V2 bomber site oh, yeah, and that, that little old French guy mm. comes out, he came to Duxford to get one of the V2s to go and use it for restoration purposes at the site. So you see, there synergy. You I like it. What goes around comes around. But yeah, make the most of an overcast day because Cooper can't go in. So yeah, might as well do some stuff while we're here. Yeah. So we're going to offload all my stuff into Bumble and then um, I'm my keys over and see what happens. Mm. Obviously priorities. Um, so yeah, uh, there was a Tim Hortons, Timmy Ho Ho's apparently it's called or something, Tim Hortons coffee shop and donuts and everything and breakfast and all that kind of stuff um, before we headed off to Duxford. So for everyone that wondered, will three of us fit in Bumble? Yes. We've got the uh, roof fan on, got the side vents open. Back doors are open. Um, back doors are open too. Yeah, we are in Royston Town Centre car park right now. So um, doing a bit of stealth camping because it was close to somewhere to walk coop, a um, bit of shopping and uh, we had a pub lunch as well. And I have spoken to the garage and I got some notifications off the van to say that it had been moving. So I uh, obviously checked on the cameras and the guy was out doing a test drive in it. So it drives. Uh, they're confident that everything's all right, but because they know I'm ready to do this big trip, they want it for another half a day to go out and do a longer journey tomorrow, yay for my diesel, um, and then come back and then do an inspection on the ramp, make sure the oil levels and things like that are, uh, are okay. So it sounds like, to me, it sounds like they are very caring and, um, you know, sort of uh, conscientious garage. So I'm gonna let them do that, obviously, um, Mandy can stay here for another couple of days anyway. So I'm going to give them the opportunity to make sure they're happy with the van and everything's all right. So that if anything hopefully doesn't happen, but if anything should happen with the van, there won't be a question over warranty that I didn't give them the right time or anything that, you know, they just resolve that. Um, but I am probably as well, once I pick it up from there, I'm probably going to do a few loops of the M25 or something like that um, to fully test it out myself before I then shoot off into France. Good so, stuff. there we go. So we just got to, still quarter to seven, so it's still quite quite early, but we've got some snacky snack snacks. Yeah, we've got a few snacks, gonna give her the opportunity to Cooper to have his tea, although probably won't because things are different. Things are different and, and it's, it's warm. So he had some sausages at the pub, which obviously he liked. So yeah, watch some on telly. We'll have a nice, um, cozy warm evening yes because it seems that that's the way it's going to be yeah <laughs> well good morning just had a phone call from the garage I had notifications off the cameras and all that that um they've been out in it again 
Um, so they just phoned me up and said it's ready for collection. Apparently, in addition to gearbox and clutch, there was a bolt they weren't happy with, so they've replaced the bolt as well. Um, so yeah, go and uh, pick it up, go for a test drive, and then uh, see what it is. But we had an all right night, didn't we? It was all right. It was very warm. It was so we had to have a bit all stuffy, the vents and windows it? open. So yeah, but we fitted okay. Just, I and would say. And we had say. a lovely, like, a, well, it wasn't quite a movie night, was it, as such, but we yeah. had a nice little chill out with the yep. bed made up and Coopy loved having all like the extra cuddles and stuff. Mm. So, yeah, it was all right. Considering, I mean, I know um, Adam and Tanya, they live in a van this yeah. big. So, um, kudos to them. Because for yes. me just putting the bed away this morning, I'm like, Coop, over this way. John, can you just stand there for a minute? Right, can you just hold these pillows? I, yeah. There's obviously a little uh, shuffle. Yeah, they've obviously got got a, something Re to find out yeah. of, of who stands where and who does what. Yeah. Um, whereas normally it's just me doing everything. So. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, I've been spoiled by the fact that um, I guess the van that um, we had, panel van, I built a fixed bed at the back specifically because I didn't want to make a bed up. Um, and the van we've got now has obviously got fixed bed at the back um, and just the ability to go into bed, come out of bed and not bother with all that. Yes. I've been a little bit spoilt by all that. And then yesterday when you decided you go, should we go for a nap? And I'm like, that's not as easy in this van. <laughs> Literally have to make the bed in full. To, Which to is why it was left up. Yeah, so we just did that and then we had to abseil out of the door because it's so high when the bed's up, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I kind of, um, yeah. <laughs> didn't, um, didn't appreciate the fact that when the bed's there, the floor's quite a way down. Yeah. Like, even Coop's like, oh, it's too big for me to get out. Yeah, we had to pass him down, didn't we? Oh, but uh, we did have a nice cuddles with mummy and daddy last night. Yeah, was it nicer than sleeping on your own in your own bed? With your own bed, you spoiled dog. Oh. Right, anyway, I reckon it's time to um, have your brew. And get and going. Make our way to the garage and see what's up with Bertie. Cool, because he reckons it's, what, half an hour away, so that makes it 45 minutes at the speeds I drive. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's kind of like half Google speed your van, isn't it? <laughs> It is. I wish there was some way you could put in your average motorway speed on mm. Google just to get some accurate timings. It would be very handy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Rescue Bumble. About time I did it for you, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you do it for me a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I think you've rescued me enough in this. Yeah. It's uh, nice to return the favour. Although saying that your gearbox now has a second gear problem. It does. It does. So. so. Need to look at that. Yeah, and this is a new, well, a reconditioned gearbox from when I bought it, so yeah. it's not even six months in yet. So, so you need to get hold of them mm. so and get that one sorted out. It is on my list of things to do today. And I need to go and um, contact by phone, some mm. strange reason, Eurotunnel, because I can't do it via the app, comes up with an unexpected error. Mm. And uh, arrange my crossing. <laughs> I know. I know. You'll be back before we know it. Thank you for looking after me. You're very welcome. I'll do it anytime.
Right, well, that's us at the Channel Tunnel. Um, checked in, everything. You drive up now, and obviously it says, have you got a pet? You say yes. And then they just direct you um, to the pet reception area. Now, if you remember last time we were in France, we got Coop a French European pet passport. So all I've done is go to the pet reception, give them Cooper's pet passport. Uh, they then give me a little machine that reads his um, little chip in his, uh, in his neck. Confirm, say, which crossing do you want to go on? I say, next available, please. They print a ticket and we're off. No animal health certificates, no rabies vaccination certificates and paperwork and checking everything and duplicates and triplicates and all that. It's just done in there. So one thing I do need to do, and I can do it in any of the countries that I'm going to go to, is I can stop and get Cooper's rabies jab uh, booster. And I'm going to see if I can get a three year one, which means we don't have to do this every year for that point. But if I can only get a one year one, I just get a one year one and when it's done. Uh, that gets updated in here and that means then that we're done and dusted so it's pretty much now like that <laughs> just show your passport or in this case show cooper's passport and then done and dusted and we're through so we have um f3 i oh know we're h3 h3 is 50 minutes uh, so we've got about an hour to wait until it's going or until they call us or you can embark and then we go queue up and then hopefully within the next hour we'll be on the train and in france so there's two things i need to do right now number one is phone mandy and let her know it was as easy as we thought and number two pick a park up for tonight and try and catch up with my original plan of following the tour de france but i think this video is a wrap i think i'd like to start the next video on a positive note of being in France, following the Tour de France. So there we go. So thank you for watching. And obviously um, hope some of this content has helped you in some way, shape or form. And um, yeah, if you're not already, subscribe, come along for the ride, find out where we get up to next time. See you later guys, take care, bye.